Hello human beings, Power Gamer here, and I appear to be in some sort of void. You see, about a year ago, the pig that was sitting on my desk made me play a terrible Sonic game, and then he used that game to make a demon, so I had to fight it using the Mega Jewel. Then I threw him out of my box as his standard protocol, but now he came back and he sent me here. Okay, that sounded more normal in my head. But yeah, looks like I'm stuck here and I have no idea what to do. Wait a minute. What's that? Oh no. Oh yes, if you want to leave this void, you're gonna have to be the game. Ugh, do I have to? Yes, do as I command or you will spend the rest of eternity walking in this endless hole of nothingness! Okay, 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 I'll do it! Jeez, you're lucky I accidentally brought my Wii remote with me. Well, I guess I have no choice. Sonic and the Black Knight, something that really makes me question my reality. Why this game exists, I don't think we'll ever really know, but I guess we can try. I don't think anyone was demanding it. The game was designed as a sequel to Sonic and the Secret Rings, because that game just went over so well, didn't it? And since that one took inspiration from a classic story, they decided to do the same thing, with this one being centered around the legend of King Arthur and the Knights of the Round Table. The game was directed by Tetsu Katano, who had previously worked on Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Heroes. They wanted to focus more on a younger demographic and make the game more cinematic and combat-focused. It was first shown off in Nintendo's Tokyo Game Show, as well as New York Comic Con in 2008, and Sega even held a contest for fans to submit artwork that could be featured in the game. I'm sure they had to exclude a lot of weird stuff. The game was released for the Wii on March 3rd, 2009 in North America, March 12th in Japan and Australia, and March 13th in Europe. Reception was fairly mixed. It somehow got even worse reviews than Secret Rings, which is not a good sign for me, and while it sold decently at first, Sega ended up removing it from stores in 2010, since most Sonic games weren't doing so well at the time. Nowadays, this game isn't talked about that much, but it does seem to have some people who enjoy it, mainly because of nostalgia. Ironically, it was the first game to be dubbed as part of the Sonic Storybook series, meaning that Sega was planning to make more games in this style, but that ended up not happening. I've never played this game before, but after how terrible Sonic and the Secret Rings ended up being, I am very, very, very concerned. I guess the least I can do is hope for an improvement. The only question that remains is, how the hell do I actually play this? Do I just kind of, uh, oh. Okay, I guess that'll work. So we open with an actually impressive looking opening cutscene. What's my name? Wilfo. After that, we can hop into adventure mode and check out the main story. We open this time in the story of King Arthur, where the wizard Merlina, the granddaughter of Merlin, is being chased down by the king. In an attempt to save herself, she casts a spell to summon a brave hero, and that hero is none other than Sonic, who is clearly in the middle of lunch. He wolves down a chili dog, and Merlina casts another spell to escape, which causes Arthur to send his knights after them. And yes, they do what they did last time, where some of the story characters are now Sonic's friends. Merlina tells Sonic that when when Arthur was granted the Scabbard of Excalibur, he was granted immortality and became corrupted, which caused him to summon a bunch of monsters. Merlina wants Sonic to stop him, so she sends him to find the ancient sword known as Caliburn. Sonic gets Caliburn, who can talk, and promises to train him to become a knight. The story is actually not half bad. It's not amazing, but it's more interesting than the last game, since we really get more of a feel for Sonic's character, and it raises some poignant questions. They keep the storybook-style presentation for the cutscenes, which is great, since that was the one good thing about Secret Rings, and the voice acting is much better, since the main characters don't sound bored for most of it. As for the in-game graphics, they're about on par with before. Decent enough, but nothing amazing. The soundtrack is also improved. It's nothing great, but there are some decent songs here, and thank God they don't play the main theme of the game every time you select and finish a mission. And the main theme itself is actually pretty good. Of course, story and presentation don't mean anything if the gameplay blows, and I'm sure you're wondering if they actually improved upon Secret Rings. Well, jumping into the first level, that answer becomes obvious. Do you see what I'm doing here? I'm not moving. You actually have control over Sonic, and you don't move forward automatically! HALLELUJAH! Aside from this glaring flaw being omitted, the gameplay is structured like its predecessor. Levels are split into various areas, each with their own set of missions to complete. Most missions require you to simply reach the end, but some require you to kill a certain number of enemies or collect enough rings. Since you no longer move automatically, you use the Wii Remote and Nunchuck together instead of just the Wii Remote on its side. This means you have full control over your movement and you aren't tilting the Wii Remote to steer, you just move the joystick. Moving backwards still feels kind of awkward since Sonic doesn't actually turn around, but it's nowhere near as bad as it was. Sadly, this game still has a bunch of forced motion controls but instead of being basic functions like moving and jumping, they're all forced into this game's big new addition. Sonic has a sword now. Yeah, he just has it right from the start, even before he finds Caliburn in the story. Seems like a bit of an oversight. The levels are absolutely filled with enemies, and you can't actually kill them by homing in. Yeah, you still have the homing attack, which is done by hitting the A button in the air, but it doesn't actually do anything. Honestly, it gets in the way more often than helping, but more on that later. The only way to kill enemies is by slashing them with your sword, which is done by, you guessed it, swinging the Wii Remote. And yes, 
this means you have to swing the Wii Remote for every single attack. And yes, it's as annoying as it sounds. They really ramped up the number of enemies in this game to make the sword more important, and Christ, it is awful. Having to constantly swing the remote is not only really annoying, it's also kind of painful. I genuinely got a lot of hand cramps from playing this game because of how tightly you have to hold the controller. Most enemies die in just one hit, but it's still really irritating since they keep swarming you. The combat in this game sucks. It, it just sucks. Not only is swinging the Wii Remote awful, but there's only like three or four types of enemies that get recycled throughout the whole game. And worst of all, okay, second worst, it is a complete pace breaker. This is a Sonic game. I want to go fast in it. At least in Secret Rings, you just bash an enemy and keep on moving. Here, you can do that sometimes, but most of the time, if you hit an enemy, you just stop dead in your tracks until you kill it. Especially since the stronger ones take like five hits and almost always require you to block by holding the Z button, which totally interrupts you. It just feels clunky and awkward. 90% of the time, I just ignored enemies because I wanted to keep moving. But since the air dash and homing attack are on the same button, if you're too close, you end up locking onto the nearest enemy. And sometimes attacking kills you since you automatically move forward when you do certain attacks that can cause you to fall into a pit. Are you freaking kidding me? Okay, this may be better than last time, but it still controls like sh There we go. The game is starting to break him. He'll never make it out of there. Wait, I think I just heard something. Hey, Fabio, was that you? Nope, nothing. I'm just uh, uh, playing some solitaire. Go back to your game. <laughs> okay. Now that I think about it, that's actually a good idea. The soul gauge returns, but you fill it by killing enemies instead of collecting pearls. And instead of speed and time break, it lets you unleash an ability called the Soul Surge. By holding down the B button, you can lock onto an enemy and charge forward to hit them. And if you swing the Wii Remote when your sword glows, you unleash a perfect strike, which does more damage and gives you more points. This game retains some of the RPG elements from Secret Rings. Every time you finish a mission, you gain followers, because I guess this is social media, and when you get enough, you level up. All it really seems to do is unlock extra things. Also at the end of each mission, you can decipher various artifacts. Most of them don't do anything, but some can be taken to the blacksmith, aka Tails. This basically serves the same purpose as the special rings from the last game. You can equip various tokens that give you buffs, but you can only use a couple at a time. You can also change your stance to be more speed or power oriented, and after a certain point, you can even craft new weapons that I never used. We have a lot more areas this time, and they have fewer missions in them, which is totally fine with me. Secret rings, each area had tons of missions, and the only mandatory ones were the ones that had the world rings. Here, it doesn't explicitly state which missions are optional and which ones aren't, but most of the time it's pretty easy to figure out which ones you need to do. Typically, once the story progresses, you don't have to do anything in that area anymore. And sadly, most of these areas feel totally identical. Misty Lake is just woods, Camelot Castle is more of a city area, Deep Woods are darker woods, Titanic Plain is an open field, Crystal Cave is what you'd expect, Molten Mine is a cave filled with lava, these levels are all the same goddamn thing. There's nothing unique or creative about these. Playing on Misty Lake feels exactly the same as Deep Woods. There might be a couple obstacles goals you see in one level that you wouldn't see in another, but the differences are very minimal. I guess the one benefit over last time is the missions don't always use the exact same level layout, but they still get really repetitive. But the weirdest thing about this game is the way it handles the rings. Instead of finding them on the ground, you have to go in these small rings of fairies that do different things depending on the color. Yellow ones give you rings, and the amount varies wildly. Red ones add to your soul gauge, and blue ones give you a boost forward. I'm not really a fan of these since they are really easy to miss. You can also find some spare rings inside breakable objects like boxes. And like secret rings, getting hit makes you lose 20 rings, so you'll want as many as possible. The lowest point of the game is without a doubt the boss fights. All of them suck at Most of them are against the three main knights, and they're awful. You have to avoid their attacks and strike at the right time, which sounds simple, but I swear they block your attacks whenever they want. And there's no health bar, so I have no idea what the f*** I'm doing. I just kept attacking until I somehow won. This game also has a battle mode, but since I only have one Wii remote, I can't play it. Thanks. You're welcome. Battle mode is as basic as it gets. You and up to three others are placed in an arena where you either work together or kill each other. It's incredibly simple and not very fun. You just jump, swing the Wii Remote, and can unleash a super attack. It's a step above party mode from Secret Rings, but you're still better off with something else. Hmm. Looks like the extra Wii Remote I got is faulty. Nice going, you stupid poor chop. We start off in Misty Lake, and after getting Calamurn, King Arthur shows up and challenges Sonic. This just serves as a tutorial for later. You have to swing the Wii Remote when this icon flashes to counter his attacks. After that, Calamurn tells Sonic to find the Lady of the Lake, but first he needs to head to Camelot Castle so Calamurn will be more presentable, egotistical schmuck. So we go there and meet the blacksmith, who agrees to fix him up. Once he does, we now have the Soul Surge, and Sonic heads into the deep woods where he's attacked by Sir Lancelot, who's now Shadow. Our first night fight, and it's simple but really annoying. After winning, Sonic takes Lancelot's sword 
sword and Caliburnus shocks Sonic didn't kill him. They meet the Lady of the Lake, who's now Amy, and she says he can counter Arthur's immortality if he proves himself as a knight. So he revisits some old areas to do so by saving prisoners, killing monsters, and giving people rings via this annoying quick time minigame. Sonic learns from a kid that some innocents have been kidnapped by a dragon, so we need to make a detour to the Titanic plane to save them. Once there, he's attacked by Sir Gawain, who's Knuckles. This fight is pretty much the same as the last one, only he attacks more frequently. Gawain tries to kill himself to restore his honor, so Sonic snatches his swords and heads to Crystal Cave. We have to save the imprisoned people by standing in these spotlights and shining them at these crystals using motion controls. It's really annoying. At the end, the kid is revealed to be the lady in disguise, meaning this was all a test. She tells Sonic he can counter the scabbard by combining Caliburn with the three sacred swords of the round table. We already have two, so now we just need the third one. Sonic heads to Molten Mine, where he confronts the final knight, Percival, who's now Blaze. She is by far the hardest one, since she hits a lot more frequently, moves faster, and has this freaking fire shield. She almost falls off a cliff, but Sonic saves her, much to her shock. Caliburn finally gives Sonic the respect he deserves, and gives him the title of Sonic, Knight of the Wind. With all three swords in hand, Sonic reunites with Merlina and heads to confront Arthur. And this is where the game goes from annoying, but somewhat tolerable, to one of the worst things I have ever done in a Sonic game. This boss fight is fucking miserable. It's almost as bad as the final boss with Tim from Secret Rings. He continuously runs forward, and you have to chase after him while avoiding his attacks. It can range from striking you with this sword that you have to block or counter, charging at you, which you have to block, dodging these lasers that follow you, or shooting these orbs, which is the most important one. Countering these orbs fills up your soul gauge, and once it's full, you have to charge forward, and then you can attack him. But first, you have to counter his attacks like before, and it's complete bullshit. The timing on these he is so picky. You have to strike at the exact right moment. If you are even a second late or a second early, you take damage. And if you die, you have to start the whole fight all over again. If you counter five attacks, swing as fast as humanly possible to attack him, and then phase two is the same thing, but even harder. Jesus Christ, why is this so f***ing specific? You have to do it absolutely perfectly. I spent half an hour on this son of a bitch. It was absolutely miserable. Ah, uh, yes, that's music to my ears. If you can actually kill this asshole, Sonic uses the swords to steal Arthur's power, causing him to vanish. And that uh, appears to be the end of the game. Yes, much like Secret Rings, you have to watch the credits before you actually beat the game, and no, you cannot skip them. And I have no easy way to pass the time either. Once they're done, you need to head to the faraway Avalon, which the game does not tell you about, and give the scabbard to Merlina. She says she will use it to make the kingdom eternal, and begins to purge the kingdom into darkness. Okay, well that's a bit of a unique direction. We then have to escape this crumbling castle under a time limit, and the knights begin to give up hope on the kingdom. Sonic says they can't give up, and the Lady of the Lake tells them they can stop Merlina by taking their four swords to various locations around the kingdom. Doing so will allow them to create a barrier that will prevent the darkness from spreading. And doing this unlocks the three knights as playable characters, which is pretty cool. They each have abilities that go back to what they can do in previous Sonic games, or the characters they're supposed to be, I guess. They also have a completely different soul surge. Lancelot's shadow is similar to Sonic, but he teleports to the nearest enemy, Gawain Knuckles can glide for a short amount of time and throw his weapons, and Percival Blades can double jump, making her easily the best character, and summon a tornado of fire around her. You then have to go to four new areas with one mission each that all involve reaching the goal under a time limit. Once there, the character will place their sword on a pedestal, and I like how the cutscene actually changes depending on which character you're using. We have the Shrouded Forest, where you have to avoid these tree branches and spiky roots, Great Megalith, which is a field that leads to a cave, it's pretty uninteresting, and the Cauldron, which is another lava level, and easily the worst, solely because of this part with the giant pits and jumping fire snakes. F this jump. It's nearly impossible without Blaze. After beating those three, you unlock the Dragon's Lair, which is yet another cave, but this one has crumbling platforms. What fun! Once you beat the main mission, you have to fight a dragon. He has three phases, one where he shoots giant fireballs, one where he shoots mini ones that spread while you also have to avoid enemies, and one where you have to do both. Avoid the shots, run towards him, and then slash his horn before he shakes you off. Once it shatters, he's dead. After that, we can go to the final area and confront Merlina, who's been transformed into the Dark Queen. She reveals that Arthur was nothing more than an illusion. It turns out she was the one who summoned all those monsters, and this whole thing was a plan to get Excalibur's scabbard, and this way she can make the kingdom last forever. Sonic tells her that everything must come to an end, and after a lengthy beating, the knights help him fuse all four swords together to form the Blade of Excalibur. Sonic gets equipped with this admittingly awesome looking armor, and now it's final boss time. And thankfully, this is a million times better than the final boss in the last storybook game. She transforms into this unholy abomination, 
and shoots orbs that you either have to deflect or dodge with the A and C buttons. Then she slashes you and you need to counter. Thankfully, it's not as picky as the Arthur fight, but it can still be annoying. Deflecting fills up your soul gauge, and then you charge forward and slash away. You do this about three or four times, and she goes down. Honestly, the best fight in the game. It can be frustrating, but also pretty satisfying. When you finally win, Merlina reverts to normal, and Sonic tells her that everything must come to an end. But that means you just need to live your life to the fullest while you can. The knights and lady congratulate Sonic, and Calibur and crowns him as the new King Arthur, so they all bow to him, much to his dismay. Another round of credits, and we hear Sonic telling the story to Amy, but she thinks he was just trying to blow her off. Some off-screen domestic violence happens as this book once again changes to the title of the game, a tradition we will never see again. There, I beat the game. Now can I please leave? What? That's impossible. It should have broken you by now. Dude, Secret Rings broke me way more than this game did. This one was at least a hell of a lot shorter. Now let me out! I don't think so. Not when I have this. No matter. I'll just send you right back. Not this time. What? No! This can't be happening! No! settled? We can 
can finally get back to business. It's a light years better than Secret Rings, but it's still not very good. The combat is repetitive, the level designs are bland, and the motion controls are insanely annoying. I wouldn't say this is an avoid at all costs like Secret Rings, but it's still not very good. I admit there were a few moments where I had fun, but for the most part, it was either really frustrating or just freaking boring. I know there are some fans of this game out there, but I am not one of them. And I'm just glad I finally got rid of that stupid pig, and I managed to get out of that void. Crap, I left my Wii remote in there.